Hello, everyone. I'm Wen Yuanzhong, a research scientist at Uber ATG. In the following, I'm going to talk about learning based end to end planning approaches. Abbas has just explained traditional planning and control methods. As we can see in this diagram, these methods typically assume that perception and prediction has already been solved with high precision using separate modules. However, such a hard barrier between different modules may lead to some optimal performance, since some useful information may be lost when we move from one module to another. Also, this is a heavy system and requires a significant amount of effort to achieve low latency. Therefore, the community is also exploring another possibility, basically build an end-to-end -end trainable model which takes raw sensor data as input and directly output driving commands. For example, we can use a huge deep neural network to do this and achieve low latency. But this method sacrifices the interpretability of traditional modular approach and brings new problems for validating the system and guarantee safety. Based on these concerns, we can go one step further as we, as we shown in this diagram, we can build single model, but with modular like components. And we carefully design each module such that the whole model is still end to end trainable. It will enjoy the benefits of end to end training and low latency inference. Moreover, we can easily encode prior knowledge into the model and validate each module similar to what we do for traditional method. In the following, I'll first introduce some representative end-to-end -end driving methods and try to give an overview of different methods as well as their pros and cons. And then I'll introduce some efforts towards building an end-to-end -end interpretable neural motion plan. All right, so here's an overview of the topic that I'm gonna touch on, including what input modality that end-to-end -end driving approaches typically use how they build the model architectures, and what are the output representations, as well as how they train the model. Lastly, I present efforts aiming for interpretability. First, let's look at how different uh, input modalities. Image, or camera sensor data, is the most straightforward input modality, as humans also rely on such inputs to drive a car. Monocular image is one popular choice. And moreover, stereo images or multi-camera setups have been shown to bring further gains, especially at junctions. Images with more semantic information has been attracting more interest in the recent years. For example, segmentation or optical flow. To do this, one can use a pre-trained network to extract segmentation result from an RGB image and then fit these results to a subsequent driving network. Although camera sensors are cheap, images suffer a lot from poor light condition and lack accurate 3D information. Therefore, industry, as well as more and more academic labs are exploring another modality, which is LiDAR point clouds. LiDAR is a sparse and irregular data format. And thus, it is now naturally suited for CNN architectures. In the end-to-end -end interpretable neural motion planner, the author project LiDAR into a bird's eye view 2D image-like representation, and then process it by a neural network. There are also other possibilities, such as using PointNet or SparseCon. In contrast to camera images, LiDAR provides more robust and accurate 3D measurements. But on the other hand, it's more expensive and lose some somatic information, such as the turning light of a car. Therefore, these two modalities are sometimes used together. Another line of work doesn't use raw sensor data like image or LiDAR. Instead, they assume perception or even prediction is already solved, and thus the ground truth bounding boxes of actors are provided. One straightforward way of using such inputs is to rasterize the bounding box into a 2D image and use different channels to encode the information for different time steps. Here's another way of using perception inputs. 
we can first define a set of affordances or costs, and then evaluate these costs based on the state of the eco car and other actors and feed them into a model. For instance, in jointly learnable behavior and trajectory planning for self-driving vehicles, the other use a set of costs, and one of which is the ego car's distance to other vehicles. The perception input modality allows for a more lightweight model as it doesn't require handling high dimensional and complex raw sensor data. However, it also hides some challenges which only occur when we use raw sensor. For example, how shall we plan if the model sometimes fails to detect surrounding objects? As we've discussed in the perception tutorial section, HD map contains rich full information of the road, and thus it is an important input modality. Similarly, existing work used maps mostly in two ways, rasterization or affordance. As shown here, we can rasterize different semantic information such as road mask or speed limits into different channels. The main drawback of this representation is that the difficulty of encoding prior knowledge. For example, even if we can encode the speed limit into a channel, it's not clear how we can enforce the model to understand and follow this construct. We can also more explicitly use map information by first evaluating the distance from the eco car trajectory to a targeted center line or to a stop sign, et cetera, and then feed them to the model. In this format, it's much easier to encode any prior knowledge we have. But on the other hand, this requires us to design handcraft features such as uh, distance to a center line and which might limit the performance of the overall model. The last piece we're going to show here is the high-level intentions of planning, since we need to drive our car to a destination instead of doing a random work. To encode such information, many works rasterize the route and feed it to the model. This route can be generated with the route planner, which is outside of the planning model. And another line of work directly inputs a high-level command into the network such as lane change, keep flying, or stealth, etc. One popular way of doing this is to predefine a set of possible commands and train a neural network header for each of them. Then during inference, one can easily choose the corresponding header based on the high level command. Okay, next, we're gonna discuss model architectures for end-to-end -end planning. So in this domain, there's not yet a standard model architecture similar to ResNet for many vision tasks. However, most works share similar ideas about how they design model. The core part is of course CNN, RNN, and MLP. CNN are used when the input is images or rasterization, and RNN are used to encode or decode temporal sequences. MLP can be used to process discrete or low dimensional data, such as high level commands. Moreover, all three of these architectures can be used together when the model has multiple input modalities. Now, let's take a look at different output representations. The most straightforward way is called actuation. For example, the model can directly output steering and acceleration values. An alternative approach, which attracts more interest these days, is to first output a set of waypoints representing the future positions of the eagle car. And then we can use a PID controller to smooth the waypoints and generate a dynamically feasible trajectory. The way this waypoints representation can be easily visualized and help us getting insights to improve the model. Both of these representations are pretty simple, but and well studied in imitation learning literature. However, it's hard for us to encode prior knowledge to the model, such as, you know, we should drive along lane and without collision. So 
inspired by the traditional planning approach, cost-based method compute cost from models and then use this cost to plan a trajectory. The core idea behind is to first sample a large variety of trajectory samples, use a model to assign, to assign a cost to each of them, and then pick the minimum cost trajectory. We'll explain this in more details later in the interpretability section. Here, we just show one example from the end-to-end -end interpretable neural motion planner. As shown here, the learned cost map, which is the colorful region in the center, can nicely guide the eagle car to follow the lane as well as nudge around a parked car. In contrast to actuation-based method, cost-based method are more interpretable. But one challenge here is that sometimes the training might be more uh, harder since we don't have direct supervision for the cost model. Except for all these two main paradigms, uh, the actuation and the cost, there are also other possibilities. For example, a model can output values for a set of predefined affordances, such as distance to center line or vehicle. Or a model can also output results for some auxiliary tasks in addition to planning output, such as object detection or semantic segmentation or optical flow. So this is believed to help model better understand important semantic information in the scene. Having discussed various planning models, let's now take a look at how we can train these models. A dominant paradigm for training this model is imitation learning. For do this, we need to first collect a big data set consisting of pairs of input scenarios and output expert demonstration. After conducting a forward pass, the error between the model output and the expert demonstration can be evaluated, and the training objective will be to minimize this error. The main difficulty here is the distribution shift between training and inference. So to address this, data augmentation is widely applied. For example, one can add in perturbation to the expert trajectory during training, as shown at the right dot. The corresponding perturbed image will be something look like this. The left one is the original image, and the right one is after perturbation. This will help get more diverse training samples. Alternatively, we can try to collect and label more diverse data. After training a model with the current data set, we can deploy the model of a car and then actually drive the car. Whenever a dangerous behavior happens, an expert will manually correct the planned trajectory. And this data can be added to the data set, which will in turn be used to train a better model. So as we can see, imitation learning is pretty straightforward pipeline and compared to reinforcement learning, which we'll introduce shortly, this learning scheme has much higher sample efficiency. However, even with the help of data augmentation, the distribution shift is still a challenging problem. A more ideal way to address this issue is called reinforcement learning. Instead of deploying the model in real world, here we can let the model run in a simulator and then collect rewards based on collision rates or goal reaching rates or any other kind of reasonable criteria. And the training objective is to maximize the expected future rewards. One of the key requirements for this to be successful is to have a high fidelity simulator such that the model trained in a simulator can be transferred to real world. However, Building a realistic simulator is itself an open academic question. I think we'll cover more on this subject in our afternoon tutorial sections, and you can find many interesting things there, so don't miss it. All right, finally, we come to one of the most important and difficult challenge in this domain, the interpretability of a driving model. Since self-driving is a safety critical application, we definitely hope that the system can work in a way 
which we can understand. And this way, we can obtain an interpretable traceback whenever an error occurs. And even better, we can also guarantee that the system is error-free to some extent. So in our lab, we try to push the boundary in this direction. Our first work is the end-to-end -end interpretable neural motion planner published at CVPR 2019. It uses a deep net to produce a learned cause volume and improve the power of the deep network with detection and prediction tasks. Later, we propose DSD net, deep structured self-driving network, which further improve performance and interpretability by outputting a non-parametric, not multi model prediction and then planning condition on this prediction. The third work investigates how to bypass detection post-processing, which may lose some information. We propose perceive, predict, apply, safe motion planning through interpretable semantic representations, where we replace instance prediction with an instance-free semantic occupancy representation and use learned interpretable planning cost over that to produce planning. Now, let me briefly explain the main idea behind each of them. So here's the model of the end-to-end -end interpretable neural motion planner. More specifically, we feed LiDAR data and HD map into a backbone CNN and extract a backbone feature map. From there, our model decodes detection bounding boxes of actors in the scene, as well as their predicted future motion, as shown in the top right. To conduct planning, the core idea is to generate a cost volume using a deconvolution network. And each channel in this volume represents a future time step. And each pixel in this volume represents the cost for traveling to that location, that time step. Then we use a physically valid trajectory sampler to sample a wide variety of trajectories given the current eagle pose. These trajectories are guaranteed to follow vehicle dynamic constraints. The cost of each sample trajectory can be obtained by indexing the learned cost volume at the waypoints along that trajectory. And the minimum cost trajectory would be our final planning output. Importantly, all computations from raw data to the final trajectory can be done in a few milliseconds. Our model achieves much better quantitative results over a strong baseline as shown in the paper. But here, let me show you a few qualitative results, which I think are more interesting. In all four figures, boxes depict detections, red boxes depict the eagle car, and the colorful region is the low cost region predicted by our model, describing where the eagle car should drive. On the top left, we show an example of following lane, and on the top right, we show an example where the eagle car encounters an intersection. Here, our model shows nice multimodality. The bottom two figures show that our model can navigate along the lanes as well as avoid collisions with other cars. Here's a short demo. So our model takes LiDAR and the map as input and output detection, prediction, as well as motion planning cost volume. We have that low cost region here for different time steps using different colors. Our plant trajectory is shown in red and ground truth trajectory is shown in blue. See here, it can follow the lane perfectly. Note that our cost volume captures multimodality. In this case, we can either go straight or change lanes. While approaching to an intersection, we can either keep lane or turn right. We also handle blockage. The cost volume shows a preference to lane change in order to avoid collision. And here are two examples of super nudging in heavy traffic. However, there are still drawbacks. First, planning is now conditioned on the prediction results, which may cause inconsistent and dangerous planning. And secondly, the model only predicts a single model future but 
the real world future is actually uncertain. So to address these two drawbacks, we propose DSDNet, a deep structured self-driving network that jointly reasons about perception, motion forecasting, and motion planning. Specifically, our method has several advantages. Firstly, computation is shared between modules and thus allow for real-time inference. Secondly, our method explicitly models socially consistent multimodal uncertainty in the future. And finally, our learning-based planner can leverage the power of deep learning and also take traffic rules into consideration in order to guarantee safety. Now, let's have a look how the model works. Given lighter point clouds and an HD map as input, we have a neural network to produce background features, which will be shared for all our modules. We first use such features to predict the detection results. Our next step is to predict the future behaviors of all actors, as well as their uncertainties, which are shown as colorful regions in the figure below. Here, different colors mean different future time steps. Of course, this is not a trivial task, as we expect to predict a multimodal non-parametric distribution, which can capture complex situations. More importantly, uh, we need behaviors of all actors to be socially consistent. For example, they won't collide with each other. To construct such non-parametric distributions, we first sample a set of dense and diverse trajectories for each actors. And then we use a neural network to assign an energy to each trajectory based on the input data. After normalization, this will become a distribution. Although we can do this for all actors, we can see here that the resulting predicts are not consistent. For example, two distribution may overlap, meaning two cars will collide with each other, which is not realistic. And to tackle this, we propose to conduct message passing between all actors and encode their socially consistent interactions within pairwise energy. This gives us multimodal socially consistent prediction. And finally, our model plans a safe trajectory with a cost minimization procedure, which ensure the pr produced planning will have minimal expected collision rate as suits the current scenario. Here, we show some interesting qualitative results. We visualize the uncertainty through a dense color map. Different colors represent different time steps. And this is the uncertainty for one second into the future. This is two seconds. This is three seconds. As you can see, our algorithm really captures all the uncertain features for the car in that circle. Here are some more examples. The top left one shows that our model is certain about the vehicle that follows a three lane. Simultaneously, it is also uncertain about a far away vehicle that is turning, which is uh, very intuitive. The remaining three figures show some interesting driving behaviors, such as perfectly following a curved lane, uh, turning left, and nudging around a parked car. Okay. So here's a short demo of our model. As you can see, our model nicely captures multimodality, especially when vehicles are approaching an intersection. When a vehicle is driving on a straight line, our model is certain about its direction, but a little bit uncertain about its future velocity. Here's an example where we perfectly predict that the leading vehicle is stopping and Based on that, we plan a nudging trajectory to avoid collision with this parked car. And this one shows our model can follow the lane perfectly. So far, we have discussed two efforts on how to improve interpretability. Both of these work detect surrounding actor first and then conduct planning based on detection results. For example, in this case, the Eagle car will know a coming vehicle is crossing its left turn lane. And thus, 
it should yield to that car. However, detection requires post-processing and only reflects the extra if its detection score exceeds a certain threshold. So what if the detection score flickers a bit and then the eagle car misdetects that vehicle? Boom. In some cases, this will cause a severe collision. And of course, we don't want to see this. To address this problem, we propose perceive, predict, and plan. Safe motion planning through interpretable semantic representations. Rather than performing object detection and then predicting trajectory for each object, this model directly generates semantic future occupancy. Furthermore, the occupancy forecast are scene based and instance free, and hence does not require thresholding of detection score or performing NMS post processing. Then, the planner uses these non-parametric and spatial temporal occupancy maps, along with other interpretable costs, to plan a trajectory that is safe, comfortable, and respects traffic rules. Note that the entire can be trained end-to-end, -end, since all components are different. Now, let's delve a little bit deeper into the semantic occupancy representation. We consider vehicles pedestrians and bikes as the classes for which we want to predict its occupancy. To make the representation more interpretable, we further subdivide these classes semantically as shown in this hierarchy. For example, for any given pixel in the region of interest, we predict how likely it is occupied by a vehicle on conflicting lanes or occupied by a parked car or any other semantics and classes. In terms of inference process, we first take LiDAR sweeps and an HD map as input and extract backbone features with a two-stream CN backbone. Then a recurrent update, a re occupancy update network predicts semantic occupancy into the future. As you can see, there is no post-processing at the extra level. This is beneficial since the computation cost doesn't increase in more cluster scene. Finally, we conduct a planning step. So the planner will sample a set of trajectories and a cost function is used to evaluate each trajectory considering different aspects of driving. The best trajectory is then selected for execution. Here, we show some examples of our interpretable cost function. For example, the spatial temporal occupancy map are used to penalize trajectories that overlap potentially occupied regions. We use map data to penalize trajectories that are not close to the land centers or violate boundaries, or does not follow a given route. We also take in the smoothness and comfort of the trajectory in the cost function and penalize, for example, trajectories that are turning at very high speed. Here's a short demo of our model. We visualize our interpretable semantic occupancy as well as our plan trajectory. We unroll our planning into the future as shown in the black solid box, and the ground truth is shown with an empty box. We use different colors to indicate different semantics that are predicted by our model. As you can see here, our semantic occupancy really captures where the other actors are, and as time goes by, the occupancy map changes to provide information of where the other actors will go to in the next few seconds. And then our planning can use the interpretable cost to produce a safe and compliant trajectory. All right, let me give you a quick summary of what we have already talked about today. So we started with a problem formulation of motion planning. We introduce the traditional planning approach. It is a hierarchical pipeline that involves, first of all, a route planning step, which provides a city scale path. And then secondly, a behavior planning step, which decides discrete intentions. And thirdly, a trajectory planning step that optimizes a tr continuous trajectory. Finally, we can use a control module to convert that continuous trajectory into a sequence of executable actions. 
And, in, and then in the second half of this section, we discussed learning based into end plan. We've covered different input modalities, output representations, and learning paradigms. Each of them have their own pros and cons. Lastly, we've discussed one of the most important challenges in this area, which is interpretability. And we introduced three efforts that try to push the boundary here. This concludes our motion planning tutorial section. Thank you for listening, and we welcome you to join our afternoon tutorial sections.